Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is a condensed version of today's episode of Undisputed, handpicked with the best segments and discussions. Skip, Shannon, let's go. Adrian Peterson signed with the Redskins last week, then got the start on Friday night. AP had 11 carries for 56 yards in Washington's loss to the Broncos. He even carried the ball on seven straight plays during one possession. And after the game, he said he was, quote, knocking a little rust off. And Skip, your guy, Ezekiel Elliott, even tweeted about AP's return saying, quote, Mama, there goes that man. Mm. Shannon, Mm. how impressive was AP? He looked good. Um, um, he looked good, but it was only 11 carries, and I can assure you, Adrian Peterson. A- Adrian Peterson is an old school bell cow. He needs carries. He needs touches. And the more you give him the football, the better the chances of success that he's going to have. But the problem is, Skip, once you reach an age, especially for that position, you carrying the ball 30 times in a game has a, a, a diminishing return in future games. You look at his first three games in uh, Arizona. He goes for, what, 134, 159. And then you look at the games after that, 21 carries, 29 yards, 13 carries, 20 yards. Three of those four last four games that he had, they were under 30 yards after he got off two of the first three for over 130. So that's the thing. Skip, I'm not saying Adrian Peterson can't be a valuable commodity because I still believe he can play. I believe he can probably get 800 yards this season, which is 50 yards a game. But they're looking at it. And Adrian, I think Adrian is trying to say, I can go get 14, 1,500 yards. No, you can't. I don't believe he can. I don't believe he can take that kind of pounding and come back because, like I said, first game, Skip, is 11. You know, he's going to be a little sore. Mm-hmm. He hadn't played a whole lot. But in the regular season, if you carry that rock 25, you carry it 30 times, mm-hmm. and then they ask you to come back and do it again. So that's where I think the problem is going to be as you start your age you can have that spot game where you remind people of what you used to be and how you and how good you used to be. Mm. But to do that on a continuous basis, on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. I think that's the, where the trouble will lie for Adrian. Mm. But you think that he is now vaulted all the way to the top of the Redskins? Oh, I, I, I've always, I've always felt he was going to oh. be the starter. Oh, okay, good. Good, I like this. So, once again, I'm going to speak as a Dallas Cowboy fan because I can't help myself. I was sort of born and raised that. I can't get it out of me. So, as a Cowboy fan, from a distance, I watched a lot of this game the other night, and I was not impressed, nor was I concerned or fearful of what I saw from Adrian Peterson. I thought he looked pretty good. He looked better than I thought he would, given all the rust. Mm -hmm. New system, new place. Mm -hmm. But it looked to me like Adrian Peterson was playing the equivalent of his Super Bowl. And I admire him for this, but a lot of backs would not subject themselves to this at this stage of their career, especially a first ballot Hall of Famer. Right. He was playing desperate. He was playing to make the team because if he came up empty for whatever reason, I don't know if he even makes the team. And now you're telling me that the team is so shaky at running back. Obviously, they lost Darius Geis, or he wouldn't even be on the team at this right. point. That he has vaulted all the way past Rob Kelly, Samaj P. Ryan, and Thompson. others. Huh? Oh, Chris Thompson. Chris Thompson, but he's the third down back. Right. He's more of a pass catcher out of the backfield. But he's vaulted all the way to Belcal, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good for me then because I don't fear that because that means they don't have a whole lot at running back if you're right about that. They didn't. That's why they invited him in. Right. So I'm looking at what the Redskins did other than Adrian Peterson the other night. They went one for 11 on third down, did their offense. That's not very good. Alex Smith went three for eight for 33, and then Colt McCoy came in and went three for eight for 19. That's not very good, right? And... Adrian Peterson's effort lifted them all the way to a 17-3 to halftime deficit to your Denver Broncos. Mm-hmm. So the Broncos were kicking them pretty. Yeah. And, and, and despite all of his heroics, Redskins, so they scored three points at halftime. They were down, what was it, 23-3 to after three quarters. I, I don't know. I just – I didn't see – a Redskins no. team that, that makes me quake. No, know? we're not talking about the Redskins, uh, 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 Washington. We're talking about Adrian we're Peterson. We're talking about Cow. Bell Cow, the Redskins? But he, really? But, wow. he, but here's, the, here's the thing, Skip. No, I don't think anybody thought that Washington was going to be overly good. See, I, see, for me, I don't see the big upgrade between check down Alex Smith and First Cousins. I, he'll, I, he'll I be a little better than Kirk Cousins. I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. But the question, can he do what he did the other night, 
can he do that for the entirety of the uh -huh. season in which he will carry the ball more than 11 times in a yep. ball game? I do not believe he can. Can he give you flashes? Can he remind you, remind you of what he used to be? Absolutely he can right. do that. All right. But consistently, over the course of 16 games, when he carries the ball, there will be times that he, I believe he will carry the ball 30-plus times okay. in a game. Right. I don't believe he can give you that. Okay. So let's, let's step back and look at exactly what happened. The last carry of Adrian Peterson's night was fourth and short against your Broncos. Mm -hmm. And Adrian admitted after the game that he wasn't real happy because the play call came in and he was expecting to get to slam it up the gut mm -hmm. and it called for him to go off left tackle. Right. So he takes it off left tackle, if we could see this play, and he decides, oh, it's open on the flank. I'll just bounce it all the way out, then I'll cut back. And I'll get 15 yards on the last carry. That was fourth and sh like a foot. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's 15 yards. Until then, he had, uh, let's see, he had 10 carries for 41 yards. So about four yards mm -hmm. a carry, which wasn't that sensational. But the 15 sort of put it over the top and made right. it seem much better than it right. really was. I did see a couple of jump cuts from him that mm -hmm. surprised me. I also saw an Adrian who looked like he was a little heavier than he usually is, but I figured that will go away with, with a few hard practices, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, because he couldn't do quite as much cardio. He's more of a, a weightlifter than a yes. cardio guy, so I'm sure that will evaporate fairly quickly. But I'm going to remind everybody, the Saints said no, and again, they had Camaro come out mm -hmm. nowhere. Right. And then the Cardinals had those two big flash games, and then they said no, right? But they well, got David Johnson Well, back. the thing, Skip, in order for him to be successful, he's going to have to be the bell cow. Mm -hmm. Because what we've seen is that when you try to split him with yeah. carries, okay. he can be, he's not going to be successful. He's not a guy. Kamara could get seven, seven touches mm -hmm. and get you 50 yards because he's going to get a, a, a one-pass play. He's going to go for 20. I'm sure Mark Ingram would like to be a bell cow. Right. Back, but, but, but they're better suited yep. for that role because Mark Ingram shared the ball at Alabama. He did. So he's used to sharing the ball. Adrian Peterson at every step has been the bell cow back. Yep. He's not used to sharing carries. Okay. He's not used to playing that role. So in order for you to maximize and get the maximum effort from him, you're going to have to give him the bulk of the carries. If you're going to be unwilling to give him the bulk of the carries, Skip, he can't be Adrian Pe He can't even give you a facsimile of yep. what the real Adrian Peterson is. Okay. So, remember, the rest of the NFL had said no to Adrian Peterson until Darius Geis went down. And right. the Redskins said, mm. let's bring him in, just check it right. out. Looked good in the workout. Oh, let's sign him. Right. Ed Jamal Charles, other guys in, right? Right. They kept, they decided to keep him for exactly $1,005. You know, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's not a lot of money. It's not right. a big risk that they took on Adrian sure. Peterson. And yet, I'm watching the game the other night, and they're showing Redskin fans in the stands just going crazy over Adrian Peterson. Yeah. Let him go crazy. He's still Adrian Peterson. Okay. He right. still has that name. Skip. Right. Is he that back that rushed for two, over 2,000 yards? No. Mm. Is he the back that was, what, rookie of the year? No. But mm. I still believe he's better than whatever they have. Mm. And but Good. but if you're not going to give him the lion's share of the carries, mm -hmm. I do not believe he you can get the benefit of what you have in mm. Adrian Peterson. Okay. So Redskins have Adrian Peterson as their bell cow. Eagles have a quarterback quandary. Eli was real hit and miss the other night. Odell didn't play. I don't know. Obviously. Your guy didn't play. play. Your guy didn't play. <laughs> yeah. Dak hadn't played. Zeke yeah. hadn't played all preseason. Neither has Tyron Smith. Mm. What about your offense? Mm. You got to score some points. My offense was on the sideline. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. What about the first game? They're on the sideline first game? They've looked really good this morning. Really? Yeah. Every time Dak's been in there, it's been whoosh, whoosh. Touchdown, touchdown. They got like, they got like what, 17 We're points? We're good. We're good. Okay. Yeah. okay. You're getting nervous. I can I see will, it. I want you to remember you said that in about two weeks. Okay. We good. I'm going to go. I'm gonna play. We, <laughs> no, I thought we were good. Back. We not good. Okay. Now let's talk about what's going to happen <laughs> opening week at Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Really? I was, Are you done with Here the conversation? Yes, You're leading this. the way now? Yeah. Get a chance to see no, the best no, middle line. That was my job. No, I'm, I'm just saying I'm going to save my, my <laughs> Carolina comments until we do. Things. No mercy. Tiger Woods finished in a tie for 40th at the Northern Trust this weekend. Then after his round yesterday, he was asked about his relationship with President Trump. Let's take a listen. Well, I've known Donald for a number of years. You know, we've, we've played the golf together um, and, you know, we've had, had dinner together. And so, yeah, that's uh, I've known him, you know, pre-presidency and obviously during his uh, presidency. He's the president of the United States and you have to respect the, the, the office. And no matter who's in the office, uh, you may 
like dislike um, personality or the, the politics, uh, but we all must respect the office. Shannon, what is your reaction to those comments? Well, I'm not surprised, Skip. Um, Tiger has done a great job of, when it comes to certain aspects of politics, staying out of it. Skip, you remember when he won the Masters in 97, the Masters champ, get the following year, he gets to determine the dinner, mm -hmm. what you want to eat. And you remember Fuzzy Zeller said, I hope they don't have no fried chicken, macaroni and cheese. Mm -hmm. That would have been Tiger Woods' perfect opportunity. You see, guys, this is the BS that I've had to deal with my entire career. This is why you don't see more, more minorities on the PGA. Mm -hmm. This is why you don't see them in the country club. Because I can assure you there are a lot more people that think like Fuzzy Zeller than not. No, that's not what he did, Skip. By the way, they were paired together opening around the next year. Had nothing to say. It was right. like peaceful coexistence going A exactly. on. Exactly. Right. So that would have been his great opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Tiger was doing because Tiger realized there are more people like Fuzzy that watch golf mm -hmm. and play golf than people like me. I don't want to tick them off because then, you know, I might not become what I want to become because I'm going to need that. You see, Tiger didn't bring more blacks to the golf course. He professionally to the golf course. Now, he did bring a lot casually. You know, you see the Michael Jordans and the Currys. All, everybody's playing golf. He brought a lot more casually to the golf course, Skip. Serena, same thing with Serena. See, the difference between Serena and Tiger, Serena is unapologetically black. You say something about Serena, mm -hmm. she will strike back. She's not going to take it, turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Billie Jean King, yep. white sport, uh, women, mm -hmm. say something about her, Martina Navratilova. Mm -hmm. You say something about them, they'll attack back. They're not going to take the high road. Mm -mm. Tiger will always take the high road because he doesn't want to tick anybody off because if somebody does not buy a Tiger Wood golf cap or a shirt or shoes or something, Tiger says, I've lost. Mm -hmm. He learned that from Michael Jordan. Yep. So see, but he says something very important, but you have to listen carefully. He said you have to respect the office mm -hmm. of the presidency he because, did. see, the presidency is an institution. Yep. The president, mm -hmm. the person, he didn't mention anything about that. You need to respect the office of the presidency regardless who occupies it. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, and I've said this before, President Trump makes it hard for you to respect that office mm -hmm. when he doesn't respect the office that he's holding. Yep. We can see why they like Tiger Woods and, and, and President Trump get along well. What? They like golf. Mm -hmm. They have an affinity for women that, you know, that's in the entertainment industry. I'm not talking about Hollywood. Okay, I am talking about But Skip, you know what I'm talking about. I do you know. try to make me say it. I don't want to say it. I didn't it. say a word. The, uh, the word. adult entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. yep. So, oh. you know, they have an affinity for those types. They both like to do, you know, what is it? NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you know, I can see why they resonate and get along quite well with one another, Skip. Doesn't this come across as if Tiger's saying Donald's a buddy of mine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I knew him before, mm. you know, he was a president. And he's known him I now. know him now. I played golf, Play I've had dinner. So, you know, yeah. so if y'all think I'm gonna come up here and say something bad about him, yeah. but like I said, we, we should have expected this from Tiger. Tiger is not gonna, he's not gonna step over. And, and to that fray, because that's not who he is. That's never who he was. And so I'm not surprised Tiger, Tiger took this approach. But if you listen closely to what he said, you respect the office, even though ne if you don't necessarily respect the person yep. that's occupying the office. So I'm with you on this, top to bottom. This was predictably typical Tiger Woods. When it comes to social, racial issues, Tiger has always been, dare I say, Jordan-esque. Yes. Right? Yes. Who took Tiger under his wing right away, 1997-98? Jordan. Michael Jeffrey Jordan did. Because he the only guy that knew what it was going to be like, Skip. That only one correct. guy. That is correct. And once upon a time, Michael supposedly said, although some have said this wasn't exactly how it came across, but he said to a friend of his, Republicans buy sneakers too. Mm-hmm. So he has to protect both sides. Correct. So don't, don't involve yourself. And, but remember that Tiger Woods, 1997, after his huge breakthrough, he basically just knocked down the gates of Augusta National and won by 12 shots, the Masters. He was on Oprah Winfrey's show, and he said, I resent being called black. Mm -hmm. And he had then further made the point that his father, Earl, half black, half Native American, I'm sorry, quarter Native American and a quarter Chinese. His mom 
half Thai, quarter Chinese, quarter white. So he's saying I'm, what was his term, Koblenation? Cob- Koblenation. Yeah, okay, Koblenation. Made it up. All right. To encompass all the bloodlines flowing through him. But I will remind you, what was Tiger Woods' father, Earl? He was a career-long military man who did a big, bad tour in Vietnam. He fought in Vietnam, mm-hmm. right? Yes. What did Tiger nearly wreck his career trying to do? He yeah, wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And it, it wasn't any play games. You right. know, he, he wanted to be a SEAL. Yeah. He, was work, he was going through maneuvers yeah. with the Navy SEALs, mm-hmm. with not real bullets, but maneuvers. Right. And I think that's, that's Hank Haney thinks he tore his ACL on a nighttime maneuver going through a, a house mm-hmm. with the Navy SEALs. But I think Tiger seriously thought about, I should do this because this is what my father did. Right. Okay, so that's... That's the way he's going to view the office of the presidency through the eyes of military. Right. Is that fair to say? That's yeah, pro- probably so. But I think the thing is, is we, sometimes we get lost, Skip, that and in Tiger's situation, yes, Tiger father served. But a lot of times people think only white served in the nope, military. I got it. Black served in Vietnam. They mm-hmm. served in World War II. Even though mm-hmm. in World War II they were separate. Mm-hmm. We go to the battlefield, we'll fight. But then, hey, you go mm-hmm. back to your barracks, I go back to mine, and I'll see you tomorrow. We get an opportunity to both die together. Mm-hmm. But... Skip, but for him, yep. acknowledge, let me ask you a question. When they arrested Tiger, what box did they check? Did they check Kabbalah Nation or they put black? <laughs> I don't know. What? Tiger, all you have to do is realize if you think you're not black, mm-hmm. look at what happened to you in 2009 and what happened subsequently. Mm-hmm. That's all you know. That ain't no Kabbalah Nation. <sighs> that's African American, bruh. Yeah, I agree. And that's and, and it, it was hard, Skip. It's hard for people. And, and a lot of people still have not forgiven him for what he said on mm-hmm. that couch with Oprah. Mm-hmm. They have not forgiven him. And because he will not take a stand, like like Venus and, uh, Venus and Serena, especially Serena, because she's the, she's the top. She's the top. She's the alpha. Mm-hmm. She's not going to let you take a swipe at her. Her, her race, how she, her, her, how she looks, nope. she won't do it. Nope. And she quick to say... I've been having to deal with this my entire life. Mm-hmm. It was unacceptable. Th- then it's still unacceptable in 2018. Tiger just bought. And plus, also, the thing, a lot of things that's happening in America, Skip, is it doesn't impact Tiger. See, when you got that, he's the top 1% of all the people in the world. He's top. So if you just, oh, one, yeah, exactly, yeah. top. So, yeah. so whatever happens, yeah. he's unaffected by it. Mm-hmm. So what, what, what is he going to say? Mm-hmm. So the most dismissive quote to me was the last one, which we didn't see in the clip that we showed, but it's a little toss-off quote because he was asked, well, do you have any further thoughts yeah. about race relations? Yeah, I was going to get Talk that. about Colin Kaepernick-inspired anthem protests or police brutality against unarmed black men. We could go on and on yeah. there. You could make some statement. Yeah. And he said, no, I just finished 72 holes and I am really hungry. Oh, hold on. Let's get really? All of a sudden. I am really hungry. Now, prior to that, hold on. Did he, was he, did he play 72 holes after they asked him the original question and became hungry? Or did he get become, say, play 72 yeah. holes? Because you see what he did, Skip? Yeah. He didn't want any parts of that. All of a sudden, his appetite, you know, guys, I'm really hungry. I just played 72 holes. Oh, look, you play 72 holes on yeah. Sunday? Yeah. I thought they spread it out over the course of the weekend. I thought you get Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm-hmm. Sunday. But okay, I see. Tiger, I saw what you did there. Mm-hmm. He wanted no parts of that, Skip Bayless, and he will never engage in a situation like that because he doesn't want to make anyone uncomfortable. Mm. And he knows talking about, Skip, talking about race makes people uncomfortable because it's still an issue. It's still the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. It still needs to be addressed, and we are unafraid to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And Tiger's like, nah, I still, got a, I still got a few more golf. Well, they don't do golf club, mm-hmm. but I still got a few more shirts. Yeah. I still got a few I more. Agree. You know, he doesn't have the, the sponsorships that he once had, yeah. but he still have some. Okay, Tiger, so what if in 1997, Tiger Woods had basically said, hey, white America, I'm black, deal with it. What if it, that would, had been sort of his Stand. He'd been so good. Oof. He'd have been so he'd be okay. so good. He'd so good, Skip. But he didn't know that. Would he have sold as many Nike products? I don't know. But maybe I, not. But the one. But you know what, Skip? He sold a lot of golf bags, mm-hmm. a lot of Nike irons, and a lot of paraphernalia. But the one thing that you can't buy is soul. Yeah, I agree. He sold that, mm-hmm. and for that you should not be able to put a price tag on. Mm-hmm. That's what he sold. Yeah, he sold a lot of Gatorade. He sold a lot of things in his life. But he also sold his soul. Mm-hmm. And what price is that worth? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Maybe 
a billion dollars. Maybe a billion dollars. That's because that's that's. Well, I mean, he's worth pretty close to that. Seven somewhere between seven a uh, billion yeah. dollars, oh, seven hundred no. million to a billion. So that's what it's worth to him. So I was amused, amused by our president's tweet about Tiger's stance or lack thereof, because he said the fake news media worked hard to get Tiger Woods to say something he didn't want to say. Tiger wouldn't play the game. He is very smart. More importantly, he's playing great golf again. Well. I don't think the president really needed to tweet this because he should have just let it lay. Right. Tiger did his job for him, right? right? I mean, right. you don't need to really applaud him. Right. But two things can be, they're not, the president and the presidency aren't mutually exclusive, Skip. Yeah. They don't have to go hand in hand. You can respect the office and not respect the person that occupies the office yeah. because he makes it very hard. Yeah. If you don't respect the office in which you occupy, how should I then re respect you? This is not what, what he does and what he tweets, Skip. That's not normal. We've tried to normalize it, and they've said, just ignore it. It'll go away. No, it won't go away, Skip. Okay. What he's doing is not normal behavior for a guy that occupies no, that office. I got it. But bottom line to this, just a few days ago, I can't remember what day it was last week, what did we do about Tiger Woods? What was our topic? Yeah. Why is he still by far the most popular player in golf, mm -hmm. right? By yeah. far, yeah. at age 42. No, nobody can move it like nobody, he can. Nobody can move it like he can. So, okay. And that's the thing, Skip. Yeah. You would think. It, look at, okay, look at LeBron. LeBron don't have to take the issue. LeBron don't have to talk. He's no. just as popular. He, he, sells he just, is, and yeah. that's a great point. I agree with that. Yeah. He is. Sometimes, Skip, you can overcome that. I believe Michael Jordan would, still, will, would have still sold yeah. as many shoes. He would have still been Mike had he taken a stance. Hmm. Sandy Koufax did. He did. When it comes to that, when it, he, I, ain't, I ain't pitching on Sunday. Nope. That's a special day to me. Mm -hmm. Go win without me. I see y'all on Monday. That's Nobody a, thinks less of Sandy Koufax for doing what he well, did. Well, they, they won, so they're okay. Hey. Nope. He said, my soul's not for mm -hmm. sale, mm -hmm. not for a World Series, mm -hmm. not for anything. Mm -hmm. But it's important to have these conversations still. Yes. And I, I think it's interesting how Tiger Woods is choosing to approach this. Yes. We'll see if he says more, because I, I can guarantee you those reporters aren't going to stop asking. Mm -mm. No mercy. On Friday night, Power won the Big Three Championship 51-43 over Three's company in Brooklyn. Corey Maggette led the way with 27 points after being named the league MVP. Congrats also to head coach Nancy Lieberman and the Power Squad and our friend Ice Cube on a great season. It was fun to watch. Skip, what was your takeaway? You mentioned it. I was so happy for and proud of my friend Nancy mm. Lieberman because she often played basketball against men as she came up through high school, college, and the pro ranks. Mm -hmm. And now she has coached a male team to a championship. That's a feat, and I hope that it opens doors for the Becky Hammonds yet to come. Yeah, well, I think that, that's my next thing, Skip, is mm -hmm. I think she might be in line to get a head Maybe. coaching job, mm -hmm. given the consideration of where point. she came from and the pioneer mm -hmm. of this women's basketball movement. Skip, but when you look at the big three, it's on the rise. It was better than it was the first year. You and if you it. look at it, they had a draft and a combine. Mm -hmm. And some players that actually played in the NBA didn't get selected. <laughs> so that lets you know the talent pool is getting better. Good point. And as guys retire from the league, they're going to want to stay active, and they're going to head over here. Yep. So this thing is onward and upward. Way to go, Q. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing what's next for Nancy. Okay, next up, John Harbaugh called Lamar Jackson's performance on Saturday, quote, his breakout. Lamar started the third quarter and had a highlight reel touchdown run. He also impressed with his arm, completing seven out of ten passes for just under 100 yards and a touchdown pass. After the game, Lamar said, quote, I hope people know I can throw now. Shannon, Ooh. how will this play out in Baltimore? Skip, I still believe this is Joe Flacco's job to lose, and unless Joe Flacco just drops off a cliff, I believe he'll be the starting quarterback until further notice. Notice, Lamar Jackson needs to get rid of those rabbit ears. And what do I mean by that, Skip? If you look at a rabbit, it really has no defense mechanism. It doesn't have venom. It doesn't have sharp razor teeth or claws. It has speed. They can hop away, mm -hmm. and but their, their sense... The ears, they have big ears, mm -hmm. which means they hear everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what Lamar Jackson's doing. Either he's on social media mm -hmm. or he's listening to the radio, he's listening to TV, because I hope people know every quarterback in the National Football League can throw. What separates Brady's and the, the Rodgers and the Drew Breeses is that they throw the ball consistently, accurately, more times than the other quarterbacks yep. do. That's the difference, not throwing the football, because every quarterback can throw. It's just like a, a pitcher, Skip. Every pitcher can pitch, but can he hit those spots? Not down the middle of the plate, 
but can he paint the edges mm -hmm. more times than not? The really good ones, the Kershaws, the Scherzers, the Verlanders, yes, they can. The other guys that live in the middle of the plate, no, they can't. So, Lamar, stop listening. Stop reading. Bruh, mm. for you to – who cares whether the people not believe you can throw? All you have to do is go out there and do what you know you can do. Mm. And then Harbaugh, and they're going to make a decision – when you're ready to play. Yep. The fans don't make that decision. The coaching staff, the front office will make the decision of when you're ready to play. But you got to get rid of those rabbit ears because it'll drive you crazy. What happens when he gets into the starting lineup mm -hmm. and they say he stinks? He was terrible. Then what? That is true. I agree with that point. I do not agree with your conclusion. I'm going to say it again. The Ravens almost certainly will not do this, but they should start Lamar Jackson. And that's mostly because I personally have seen enough of a guy I call Joe Fluco since his Super Bowl victory. And he was outstanding in that Super Bowl <laughs> run. I don't even know who that guy was. 11 touchdowns to no interceptions. Got a little lucky in the end because I thought Colin Kaepernick got robbed in the end of that game. It could have swung the other way. Mm -hmm. But Joe Fluco was Joe Flacco. And they won a championship. And he got his money. He got paid like nobody got paid because he became – the highest paid in the whole paid. league. And since then, over the last five years, Joe Flacco, well, his team has missed the playoffs four of those five years, and Joe Flacco has thrown the second most interceptions over those five years to Eli Manning, who's led the league in interceptions and think about three it, times. And he missed, remember, he missed like eight or nine he games did. because of injury, or he might have led the league in interceptions. Guy. And his QBR has sunk to way below average over those five years. And he's scheduled to make $25 million this year. Don't ask me. I can't justify it. There's something about Lamar Jackson that I saw again in this game. And, again, this was against second and third teamers. Mm -hmm. But I just like the way this kid's put together. I like his mental and physical toughness. He, he seems to be able to run and be able to ju jump right back up. He seems to be able to avoid that, so to speak, kill shot type hit. He seems to have a gift for that and a gift for playmaking that is rare to me. In his burst, it's, it's Michael Vick, yeah. man. It is his, his ability to accelerate with the football in his hand. It's Man, it might even be a little beyond Vick. Vick's a little more side to side elusive. Threw the ball on the, on the move yep. a lot better than Lamar's got a funky motion. He doesn't have a powerful – Michael Vick had a cannon. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. A, he threw rockets. But this kid, despite his funky motion, when the ball comes, comes out, it comes out clean. Right. And it, it spirals, and he's pretty accurate. I'm not saying he's deadly accurate, but I think he's accurate enough to be a, a successful starting quarterback in this league. Of all the pro sports, Skip, yeah. what's the one position that scrutinized and criticized the most in pro sports? Quarterback. Yeah. Quarterback, mm -hmm. you can't let that affect you. And he right. Now you're going back to that. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Well, but I got that. I, I already did that. I, I'm but talking I, about this. You need to comment on what you're seeing. I'm seeing I, playmaker. Mm. I'm seeing a kid who can electrify a crowd and electrify a Ravens team. Well, if that was the case, Skip, yeah. they needed to put him in with the starters to see. Because you're not – that's an unfair advantage that Joe Flacco – I think they're afraid of that because I think they would see that he would take over. I think they're afraid – well, considering what you saw the previous week when he was going to get second and third team and he didn't look so good, Skip, are you sure that's what you want? Because here's the – some plays. I don't – for me, I don't want to destroy his confidence so early on. Skip, there's nothing but time. We have time here. If you believe that Lamar Jackson is your future, you don't want to destroy his confidence the first two or three weeks of the season. Okay. I, I will give you that. I don't think you can destroy Baker Mayfield's confidence because he's just been there and done it at such a high level. There's just something about the chip on his shoulder that mm -hmm. I don't think you can knock that chip off. Uh -huh. But with this kid, I will give you that. You could get destroyed where he'd start to second guess, run or throw, run or throw, run right. or throw. And once you get the identity crisis going, you can't operate anymore. And the difference between Baker Mayfield's situation yep. and Lamar Jackson's situation is that the Ravens are expected to get to the playoffs and contend. That's not the expectations of the Cleveland Browns. It's becoming, but go ahead. Well, it is. You. Huh? You. I think their odds well, you are better than the Ravens' you, odds in Vegas. Did you put aren't, some, they, aren't they? I think you might have went to Vegas and uh, put some money I down a couple of I didn't put a years. dime on it, but I wish I had. No, you don't. <laughs> no. No, because that's just throwing money right out the no. window. Well, the you know that I can is because they won't play Baker Mayfield, and these guys won't play Oh, so you, what you're saying is they, they, you knew they were going to play I Baker. I told you, you that.
I say Tyrod. nine wins with Baker, and I'll give you seven with Tyrod. Seven? Maybe I six? Nine. I don't see nine. I don't, yeah. I, it's going to be hard for them okay. to get the nine either way. All right. But, Lamar, look, I think I, I believe, Skip, with a year under his belt. Like I said, this process, Joe Flacco is going to – Joe Flacco is actually determining uh, uh, Lamar Jackson's how soon he plays. Joe Flacco stinks, stinks it up, Skip, mm -hmm. because in years past, where were they going to go? Who were they going to put it? Who, his backup? Were you going to put him in? So they were, they were stuck with, Joe, play your way out of it. Now they have someone that they drafted in the first round. They're not going to say, Joe, play your way out of it. Joe, yep. come sit your butt down, mm. and they're going to put this kid in. So it feels like and sounds like they're going to put this kid in in little packages. They're going to toss him the ball. They're going to hand him the ball. They're going to let him run run pass options. Hold on, Skip. Why would, you, why would you toss him the ball or hand him the ball when you say you don't want him to take hits? So just because you hand him the ball, he's still a quarterback. Mm -hmm. The difference is when you hand him the ball, they treat him like a running back. Mm -hmm. So you say you don't want him to take those shots, but you're going to hand him the ball and say, okay, go get it. Mm. That makes no sense to me. I just don't want to seem relegated to this, but I guess you could argue if you can't get on the field at all, at least you can get little tastes of the field, little this and that, so in other words, gadget they're, play. They're going to try to put him out like Slash, like they did Cordell Stewart That's early in his career. Be. Yeah, and it worked. That team got to the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. yeah, and Cordell ended up starting and yeah. finished second. I think he finished second one year in the MVP MVP voting. He got him to a, 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 a two AFC Championship he games. Did. Lost both of them, but he had a, he had a, he had a, a pretty good career. I think he was better than Neil O'Donnell, all things yeah. considered, because Neil O'Donnell put Larry Brown almost in the Hall of Fame in one day. He right? did. And then Larry Brown got cut the next year, went yeah. to the Raiders. Well, right? he got his money. Oh, he got paid. Yeah. He got paid. But the only thing is, By Skip, the way, I, he was the Super Bowl MVP, MVP that day. Larry Brown? No, actually, the Super Bowl MVP was mm. Neil O'Donnell. Yeah, it was. Because he stunk it up. Yep. I mean, he came out with me. We, we, we class of 1990, but mm. Neil, I'm sorry. But you knew no, you stunk it up. Stunk it up. Way to go. But I don't, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, Lamar Jackson. They put Lamar Jackson in there the opening day. They're going to wait. Mm. No, don't do that. Why not? Because he, he's not ready yet. Have you been watching Joe Fluco over the last five years? Don't you years? know anything about cooking? You look at it sometimes, you, you know, you look at it like, okay. man, they ain't ready yet. Let them stand there about 10 more minutes. Mm. Then you come back down, the, ooh, the thing's running just right. Two more minutes, they're ready to go. Mm. Mama, I, they're ready, mama. I wouldn't know a thing about cooking. Cook, I yeah, know you wouldn't. I mm. wish I did, but no, I don't either, mm. unfortunately. Oh, Shay, boy, they call Shay Buddy Crocker. That's what they call me, Buddy Lee Crocker, because I can make but I can make them. Mm. When it comes to bacon skill, Bayless. Mm. That's your mm. specialty? Yeah. So are you saying you're better than my brother? No. Nah, why you? Why everything got to be against? You go to the highest level. You just can't go to a normal person. You go to your brother who's a, 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 a classic trained World chef. World class. Yes. Yeah. I just old Buddy Lee Crocker over here just mm. making some, you know, flapjacks and French mm. toast and a little this and a little that. Yep. Yep. But I bet he can't make a possum and, and, and raccoon better than my sister. I bet he can't do that. Chop those, put them old bell peppers and onions That's on it good. with some celery. Let that thing bake mm. with that tin foil around it. I bet he can't do that. Mm. Betty can't make no soft shell turtle like my homeboy, too. I don't know. Nah, -huh, yeah. Be Betty to. can't do that. Yeah. It's always a competition. Chef of the year, restaurant of the year. Oh. I put my homeboy, too, on that grill mm. with that goat, that wild goat, Skip. Huh. Man, make a Jack Rabbit oh. slap a German Shepherd to get a bite of it. And you know rabbits don't eat my meat. My brother sells goat. I'll bet he does. He's got everything. He sells goat? Yeah. What? Authentic Mexican. You ought to try it. Oh my Frontier. I know a goat. Yeah. I know a goat no. personally. No. Oh, really? Goat James. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's talk I do a little bit it. more about uh, Goat James. <laughs> Will Kobe fans ever love LeBron? <laughs> Will they ever do it? We'll discuss next. No mercy. LeBron signed with the Lakers, which should have excited every fan of the purple and gold, but it has not. Two of LeBron's murals here in L.A. were vandalized, and speculation is diehard. Kobe fans are not putting out the welcome mat for the king. Kobe was asked about it recently. Let's take a listen. Listen, if you're a fan of mine, you're a fan of winning. You're a fan of the Lakers. Right? I bleed purple and gold, so that's above anything else. I've been a Laker fan since I was yay high. Mm -hmm. That's never going to change, right? And uh, we're about winning championships. So they'll, they'll fall in line. Shannon, what do you make of Kobe's comments? That's right. Mm. He's been a Laker since he's been this big. Yay high. Yep. And so he says he's there. Uh, if you're a fan of his, you're about winning. You're a fan of LeBron, you're about winning. Mm. And he's coming to the uh, uh, purple and gold, mm. and he's going to win. 
He did not say that. That's what I'm saying. I'm paraphrasing. He did not say that. I'm paraphrasing. Can I paraphrase? That's what he meant. No, you cannot. You're leaping to conclusions. He did not leap to. First, first, this is is really simple. Kobe said, look, guys, if if, if you're a fan of mine, I play for the Lakers. You should root for people that come play for the Lakers because they're here to run a championship. Mm-hmm. And this guy's going to get you as close to winning a championship as you're going to get in a very long he, time. He did not say I'm that. Say- he did not say that. Something. Okay, go ahead. You don't have to say everything, mm-hmm. but you know what he well, means. You're, you're reading so much into it. He didn't I ain't say reading that nothing. Well, You can be a Kobe fan. And, and root for LeBron. They're not going against each other, Skip. LeBron James cannot undo the 20 years that's been done by Kobe for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. He can't undo that. He can't undo what Shaq accomplished or what Magic or what Kareem and James were that he can't. All he can do is add to what the Lakers, this historically great organization, has already accomplished. Mm-hmm. All he can do is add. There are certain recipes, Skip, you don't tinker with. But, mm-hmm. you know. Maybe the presentation. Maybe you presented mm, a better into this way. You're cooking. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at cooking. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, Skip, y'all need to study. The, they, they, they get ridiculous with this. Mm. Now, I'm about to be out on these Laker fans. Now, I'm about to be out on well, them. They're way out on you. No. Yep. Cause, and, and me and Brian, see, we thought we was doing you a favor no, by nope. coming here. Nope. You missed the boat on this one. I don't think LeBron saw this coming. Because he has been so idolized, so protected everywhere he's been. And all of a sudden he walks into this hornet's nest. It's Kobe's nest. It's not his. Sorry. It's okay, no. Skip. We're not trying to undo Kobe. LeBron ain't say, well, I'll come here if y'all take eight or the 24 out the Raptors. Mm-hmm. Or y'all get rid of the That's not what LeBron said. LeBron says, mm-hmm. I'm coming here to add. Mm. to what this organization has already accomplished. We're going to get us some more jewelry. Mm, okay. More gold Larry O'Brien trophies. So here's my read on what Kobe said to Rich Eisen's, whatever it is, the show. I believe that Kobe Bryant will never, ever, ever believe that LeBron James is better than Kobe. Oh, no, no absolutely not. No, 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 you're never, right. Absolutely. Ever change. No, no. He believes he's mentally and physically tougher than LeBron has ever been. He believes, Kobe, that he's more clutch than LeBron has ever been. Which is not true. Well, it is true. Mm -mm. And it's it's the way Kobe is going to think, and that will never change. Okay. So he wanted to do LeBron a small favor, but only a small one. He wanted to open the door by slightly encouraging his fans to come on to the LeBron party, just just at least sit outside on the lawn, just kind of – and what was the phrase that he used – eventually they will fall in line. Well, that's like damning with faint praise because he's not saying they're going to embrace LeBron. We don't need him to embrace Okay, well, that's, they're not saying, or Kobe's not saying that his fans will ever say, LeBron has dethroned Kobe. They'll just fall in line. Yeah, we they're, they're, it's reluctantly. There's reluctance to, to that, right? First of all, let's fall in line. Well, okay, we'll give up and we'll give in. And just because he's wearing purple and gold, we'll kind of root for him but he's never going to eclipse our Kobe. First of all, let's do real talk. You and I both know, Kobe and MJ feel like they're the greatest two players they'll play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. They feel like no matter what, all the Hall of Famers or all the greatest players, they feel like it's them two, and then everybody else will talk to y'all when we finish our conversation. Yep. That's how he actually thinks. Sure. LeBron's like, hold on, wait a minute, bro. I'm up in this piece. Mm-hmm. I'm either first or second greatest player of all time based on my resume. Because... Hold on. I'm trying to figure out. This sounds like battle lines have been drawn by you. No, I'm just trying to figure out in what sport can we honestly say that a person with one regular season MVP has ever been considered the GOAT? Name the sport. With one regular season MVP, Mm -hmm. he gets considered to be the GOAT. Well, he could have won 10. No, I'm not. I'm talking talking about about Kobe. Oh, I thought you meant Jordan. I know. I'm saying name the one in what sport. If you look at hockey, can with Gretzky. Well, I ben, never said Kobe is better than Jordan. No, I'm saying he's the GOAT. People want to say he's the GOAT. How? how what? what well, they just think he's better than LeBron. I, I don't even think Kobe what? fans think that at he's better what? than... At what? 
Well, that's a whole discussion for another day. I'm just telling what they're doing. That's what they we don't, think. What, what, that's look, their mindset. If you don't want to embrace us so and, well. And it runs so deep here that they're willing to deface murals of LeBron James what? and spray paint three and six on them, which is LeBron. Do whatever you want. Record. You either ride with us or we'll roll yeah. over you. But yeah. one way to pro progress must progress. You're going to roll over the COVID. Roll thing. with, ride with us. Ooh, or roll I, with us. like battle lines. Roll me. with us uh -huh. or we'll roll over you. That's a threat. But this LeBron train yeah. is here in L.A. Really? And it's about to take off. And you don't want to get left behind. You know what? Choo-choo. I, I think Kobe <laughs> despises the All LeBron aboard! Yep. <laughs> Kobe despises that LeBron James came to L.A. and is a Laker. Well, he don't worry. He will He'll get over it. That's what I think. He'll get over it. Well, he tried to do him a little favor. We don't need no favors. My, my people will fall in line. That's all right. Okay. LeBron got enough people. Yeah. When he start dropping these triple dubs, they start winning, they win this title. Mm. They're like, Kobe, who? What? Mm. Oh, that's what you had for dinner? You think they'll do that? That's what you had for dinner last night? I don't think that's going to happen. Skip, let them love Kobe. Okay, I so, like Kobe. So he wins a title for the Lakers. He's four and six in the finals. What was Kobe? Five and three? Five and two. Five and two? Yep. Okay, I'll take that. Five and two. Yeah. Is that better than three and six? I don't know. Maybe well, it's not. I just, you know, I, I, would, I would have loved to have seen LeBron James in his prime play with a prime shine. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful thing that would have been. Mm. What a wonderful thing. And have Phil Jackson as a coach. Mm. What a wonderful thing. See, I would love to have seen Kobe in his prime get to play in the Eastern Conference the whole way. He would have dominated. Oh, like oh, like he played before, yeah. like he played when Shaq left yeah. and they didn't have power? Mm. Like he'd play. Oh, he'd have got 35, 40 a night. But what was he winning, Skip? Did he win some championships? He won two with Pau Gasol. With Pau. Wow. If, let me ask you a question. Is Pau Gasol going to the Hall of Fame? Everybody gets in the Hall of Fame. It, so are you saying Pau Gasol is not a good player? Is that no, what you're trying to do? He's pretty good. Was, was he pretty good he back all -time then? All-time great. Is he top 50? You did, you, I wouldn't give him You do 50. realize that he took the Memphis Grizzlies mm -hmm. to the playoffs. Okay. The Grizzlies. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got to be careful because he's my spur now. So, but I'm, I'm uh, just saying. He's okay. I, I, he's all I'm saying is like, look, Kobe, Kobe yeah. fans are Kobe fans. It's not Kobe fans against LeBron because we're on the same team, Skip. Mm -mm. We're on the same team. You just. I mean, I would have liked to. Uh, so, uh, you so, just drove a stake between them. That's I get, how about a prime example? Yeah. Peyton Manning joining the Broncos. Mm. It wasn't no, he ain't no be no John Elway. He ain't won no championship. Mm. They're like, Peyton, hey, we welcome to have you because now we know we're closer to winning more championships with you as opposed to without you. Mm. That's a prime example. I can't make it no better. I can't make it any better. Maybe John Elway wasn't as beloved in Denver as Kobe is in L.A. I don't know. Bull Jai. I don't <laughs> Bull know. Jai. Careful, watch your Bull face. Jai. Skip yeah. Bayless, you know it. And guess what? I don't know. Peyton Manning, deep. Peyton Manning came. What did he have, Skip? He had four regular season MVPs. Mm -hmm. He had the one Super Bowl. He had lost another. John Elway had the two Super Bowl wins, although he had lost three. And same thing. Here come LeBron. No Maybe boys. Bronco fans decided right away, well, Peyton's kind of on equal footing with John. But here in L.A., they're like, LeBron James? Are you kidding me? No. But first of all, Kobe can't be on equal footing with old LeBron. Huh? No, you can't be able to go in. Oh, well, that's he, not Because he's not, he not in South Dakota. Uh, uh. He ain't in South Dakota. To be on equal footing with Braun, you got to be in South Dakota. How do you get to South Dakota at three and six? I want to know. How do you explain that? Your <sighs> restaurant sells only W's, but Kobe's three and yeah. six in the finals. I mean, uh, LeBron's three and six in the finals. We got vacation he's homes. on Mount Rushmore? We got vacation homes up in South Dakota. Oh, really? Yeah, me, him, MJ, yeah. Kareem, You've been to South Dakota. Magic. Somehow oh, I don't. Interesting. Know. So Kobe's saying they will fall in line, which means by Sturgis. default. By mm, default. Okay. That's what you're the best. Ain't you're no gonna default. Get, the best you're gonna get in LA is by default. We win Kobe. that we we, we oh. win the rings. Yeah. It's, it's it, rings brings people together, Skip. Now you're to the bottom line, which is ain't gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna happen. Unless Kevin Durant comes here and then it's Kevin Durant will be a much bigger star in LA than LeBron James is. It's gonna happen. Mm. With, with KD, it might... It, it first, of, first of all, there's only a handful of right now, there's a whole handful of people that's on LeBron's level as far as universally. Mm -hmm. You got to talk about Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. You talk about Messi. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, MJ still is going to... But even though MJ... He, not Bron, not right now. Mm -hmm. Not right now. Bron on mm -hmm. another level. Bron like soccer stars. Mm -hmm. Soccer stars. Yep. He's in for it. He stepped in it here. In we, that's, Skip, yeah. that's what we wanted. We love we a challenge. Thank Kobe for a, giving you a little nod, just a little bit. Uh, they'll fall in line eventually. Line. The greater, the greater we'll the challenge, mm. the greater the conquest. Okay.
Skip. What you're going to win a championship? Yes. With Kevin Durant or without him? Genghis Khan didn't say, I want 100 acres. Mm. What did he do, Skip? He wanted it all. Yeah, but he had the Mongol horse. Nah, what I mean. Mm. <laughs> I just want to know if you two ever fall in line for mm. me. I feel like I, that's wishful thinking. Mm. Is it panic time for Skip <laughs> and all the Cowboys fans? Nope. Sorry. Are you sure about that, Skip? Nope. We'll discuss Sorry. next. Yep. No mercy. The Cowboys committed eight turnovers last night and were blown out 27-3 against the Cardinals. Dallas is now 0-3 in the preseason, but Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott were not in the lineup. Dak has thrown two touchdown passes this preseason, but Zeke hasn't played at all. And three starting offensive linemen are dealing with injuries. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Mark Schlereth. Mark. Here we go. How yes. concerned should the Cowboys be right now? I think they need to be very concerned. Mm. Um, we used to have this saying when Shannon and I played is they don't count, but they do matter. It matters how you establish yourself. It matters how you go out there. Right. How you go out there and handle your business. There is this flip the switch mentality that exists in the NFL today because they don't want to risk injury and they don't want to, you know, the guys are paying a lot of money to. Uh, you've got an opportunity now to roll out in the first part of the preseason or the first part of the regular season and actually play well if you basically handle your business in the preseason. So many teams decide, well, we're just going to make the first four weeks of the season our preseason. Right. Yep. And you look at their division, are the Giants better? I think they're better, mm -hmm. right? Are the Eagles, or the, the Eagles are the defending champions. They haven't played very well either. Where's Washington right now? Like, this division is, is kind of an anomaly to me. Like, I don't know what they are right now. I have a feeling the Eagles are going to be okay, but still, I don't believe in that. Hey, we're just going to flip the switch come, you know, the first week of the season. We're going to be okay. You've got your starting offensive line. Smith has chronic back issues. Mm -hmm. Travis Frederick, Yon Barre syndrome. Mm -hmm. I mean, he it. may never play yep. uh, this year. I mean, and, and you never know how that's going to affect him long term. Zach Martin, Martin has a knee injury, mm -hmm. says he's going to be back for week run, one. Does. I don't, I, I just, like, there is, we don't know who your established receiving core is. I, I, there are so many things that scare me about the way they've handled this preseason. You should, if you're a Cowboy fan, you should be nervous. Mm -hmm. mm. And the thing is, because everybody, they want to protect the player. Skip, you play tackle football. There's a chance whether you play preseason, regular season, somebody tackle you, something bad can happen. Or you can have a non-contact injury. So what? I guess if you go down there and you have a non-contract injury in week one, well, at least he didn't play in the preseason. That makes no sense. You have to get guys used to being hit. Mm. That's the problem. A lot of these injuries, guys are not used to being hit, Skip. So they get a hit. They don't really know how to fall just yet. They get twisted, and boom, that's what happens. Mm. You cannot protect as hard unless you don't play at all. If you play tackle football, there's a chance every time you go to tackle someone or someone tackles you, mm -hmm. something bad can happen. It's hard for me to not. I've seen that uh, LT was a running back. I think LT might have played two preseason games in his entire career. Mm -hmm. Adrian Peterson didn't play a whole lot in the preseason. Running back. But remember, Adrian Peterson had more carries the other night in Washington just trying to make the team than he had in the previous six preseasons combined. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. And that's okay because that guy's going to touch the ball somewhere between 300 and 400 mm -hmm. times. So if you can minimize the amount of hits he's going to put on his body, mm -hmm. you do that. Okay. But for a quarterback, Skip, and for offensive lineman, Skip, you got to get some timing. Mm. You got guys got to got to be in sync. Now, I know when, when Stink and I played together, we were going to play 10, 15. Now, it all, it all varied. If we look good, we would go play 10 or 15 yep. plays. <laughs> if we look like some stir fry, we go play 25 party plays. Right. But the third preseason game, we're going to the half okay. or at least the first series in the third quarter. All right. You knew that, but come game time, Skip, um, oh, that first opening day, came out rolling. Mm. Okay. So, is Ezekiel Elliott healthy to our knowledge right now? Yes. Very healthy. Is Dak Prescott very healthy as we speak? Yes. I think he's very healthy. Mm -hmm. That's all I need to know because what did last night tell me? What I already knew, the Cowboys have no backup quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if they cut both of them tomorrow, but somebody's got to play Thursday right. night, so maybe after Thursday. Cooper Rush, Mike White, I don't think they can play. Cooper Rush had some flashes a year ago, but – if Dak Prescott goes down, they are done. 
It's him or bust. And I'm okay with that because I'm knocking on wood. He's been fairly durable over his first two. He's been very durable. Sean Lee is more important. Okay. He is not more That's what you told me. Quarterback is more important. Oh, okay. But they had him all last year, but so why'd they go 9-7? He's to the defense. And by the way, okay. he didn't play last night either, and he is upright and I think fully healthy. And I agree with your thought about they count. I mean, I'm sorry, they, they don't. They, they don't matter. Count, they matter. They matter, yeah. I, I despise the eight turnovers. It's just bad, even though the people who contributed to the turnovers <laughs> will not be playing when the real bullets start flying. But they were flying last night, unfortunately, on national TV, and eight turnovers are contagious. It just gets in your psyche, and it starts to infect the first team. And once you see balls on the carpet, everybody starts putting balls on the carpet. Right. I don't love it. But you have two weeks to just kind of shake it out of your system because we did see one thing happen last night when the first team defense without Sean Lee and without David Irving, who will be back after four games and he's suspended. But without those two, the first team defense looked dominating to me because Randy Gregory came out last well, night. It was like a welcome back Randy Gregory. Well, it, well the Cardinals mm-hmm. didn't have David Johnson, didn't mm-hmm. have Larry Fitzgerald, right. so they were playing without some of their starters okay, also. Okay, but I was talking about defense now. Defense. With the was, Cardinals okay, offense. Okay, I, I got it. But all I can do is evaluate what I see on my TV and my eye test told me a woozy is turning into a star. Oh, man, stop. Okay. Hey, listen, I think, I think you look at Dallas Cowboys defense just from a personnel standpoint. You, would, you could make a very good argument. They've got compelling defensive ends, compelling mm-hmm. ability to rush the passer inside guys that can rush the passer. Yeah. I like the cornerback position moving Byron Jones over there. I think like I, I like where they sit right mm-hmm. now from just a personnel standpoint. You know, you mentioned the two weeks. Shannon and I have been a part of a number one overall mm-hmm. seed that got that week off, that bye week yeah. off, came out flat, did not play very well, end up losing a playoff game as a number one seed. This to two Mark weeks, Brunel? right? This yeah. two weeks of sitting around. Yeah, you like yeah, it. I like yeah. it. But this two At weeks, home. this two weeks Jackson of sitting Dillon around. Yeah, yeah, he, he just continues on. Keep this going. two weeks of sitting around, <laughs> like without playing. Yeah. That doesn't. That doesn't change the fact that you're completely out of sync. You haven't developed yeah. any rhythm, okay. and it's going to be hard in two weeks hard. of not okay. playing to develop some rhythm early in the season. That, I'm going to say it again. A lot of other teams that don't have rhythm, too. So maybe, you know, My maybe that's okay. My receiving core will be much better because there's no Des Bryant. Dak Prescott's going to spread the ball to a bunch of, if you want, no-name receivers. He'll just yeah. spread it. Cole Beasley's not no-name. Terrence Williams is not no-name. But after that, it's yeah. just a collection. I don't really see receivers. I see yeah. retrievers. Really? A receiver is someone that catches the ball. Oh. A retriever is somebody that hits the ground and bring it back to you. That's what I really? see. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, them guys, they're not receivers. Oh, wait, they bring it back to you, so they must have no. trolled it? The, yeah, no, after you pay, after they hit the dirt, they toss it to the, uh, the official. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You, Skip, you saw what happened last night. Mm. You saw, I mean, again, everything right there at the line of scrimmage, mm-hmm. five yards here, seven yards there, mm-hmm. even without Dink and Dak. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. Michael mm-hmm. Gallup had an opportunity. I said, Skip, been telling me about this guy. I said, I'm going to watch it. He's made a couple big snatches, man. He's got range. All he He's had, got catch radius. All he had to do was yep. continue to run and put his hands up. The ball's going to hit him in his hands. Mm-hmm. He'll hit his head I on the goal. I tweeted it immediately. He jumped way too soon. I have no idea why. But who was throwing to him? Cooper Rush. Not that was Dak a good Prescott. throw. Cooper Rush. Well, if, if Dak no gro- rapport. Well, yeah, that's, that's the, why you play in the game. That's why you put Dak in the game. That's, that's exactly <laughs> the point. You just <laughs> made our point. No rapport because they haven't played together. See? Okay, did you yeah, see Dak's that's gonna work. pass to Michael Gallup? Is that possible? I saw Michael Gallup run down the sideline and catch one right in the bread basket no, no, from Dak Prescott. You saw the San Francisco saw, 49er yeah, 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 cornerback yeah. misplay the ball. Right. Mm-hmm. He stops running. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Yeah. Unbeknownst to uh-huh. me. Well, you didn't hear what Chris Collinsworth said on NBC last night because you don't listen to the sound. But Chris Collinsworth said he went to Cowboy practice on Friday and he said he was blown away by Ezekiel Elliott. I need him. He said he was exploding all over the field. Was. He was. I believe it. You know what, Skip? But I needed I knew I needed you to come in and tell me what Collinsworth said about the guys that were on the field last night. Mm. He saw them in practice he too. He loved Randy Gregory, just loved him. I'm talking about the offense. Yeah, but he said the, the Cowboy pass rush exactly what Mark just said. The, Three, four games in, they, they could start. They, the, they, 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 they've they've got a fierce. chance. I think they've got a chance to be really good on the defense right. side of the there ball. There we go. Again, Sean Lee. You know what? Hey, Ezekiel Elliott in shorts and a t-shirt. Yep. 
Oh, Woo, but I've, I've, I've seen him. Look, I'm telling you what. I've it, seen him lead the league in rushing. Where I, he has. Listen, I have yep. too, and yep. I think he's a great player. And mm -hmm. the one thing about running back, you probably transition a little bit easier without. We've seen this with yeah. like you talked about Peterson and other guys that haven't gotten carries um, LT in the in the preseason. But yep. a quarterback position, mm -hmm. hey, all I know is Tom Brady. Tom Brady plays in the preseason. Well, he doesn't usually until this year when Belichick went but I need it. I don't know how you felt, Mark, but I needed to play. I needed to get my rhythm. I needed oh, to get my time. No. Yes, I did. Skip, skip, yeah. In year eight and nine, you're like, yes. please get oh, me I, out. I, just let me go and get this. Mm. Hey, let me get my 25. Let me look good. This dress rehearsal. Skip all this. It was a dress rehearsal. Mm. Make sure the outfit fit well. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? You're you going to put it on. Let me see y'all walk you know, out there. You know what I want to do? Honestly, this is what I want to do. I want to take the ball when we got it as an offense. I wanted to cram it down your mm -hmm. throat. Yep. I wanted to make sure that if we played again during the regular season, mm. postseason, Super Bowl, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. that you knew you were in you knew you were gonna have an all day, you know, yeah. an all day yeah. affair if it. we got together again. Yeah. Okay. And then I want to walk to the sideline, take my shoulder pads off, and eat sunflower seeds. That's it. Okay. That's all I, I want to do. do. That's that's all I want to do. Point. The Cowboys just want everybody to take them lightly. That's all. And they're just Hanging. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. going to take the I cow. That's interesting, Mark. Thank you. Everybody's going to beat the brakes off of them. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.